welcome to the Dunedin Stories podcast. Thanks. So lovely to have you here. It's nice to be here. Recent connection, but I'm feeling like there's some kind of kin energy going on I, I here. I think so, Kindred yeah. energy. Yeah. yeah. We'll find out at some point that actually we were <laughs> in the same like dance group at six or something. Absolutely. There yeah. will be something like that. <laughs> Well, for the audience's purpose, do you want to let everybody know who you are and, and what we're talking about today? Yeah, yeah. Well, so I am uh, Rebecca Rowe, but now known as Bex Rowe. Um, I have I am a proud to need night. Uh, I've been working in the film and television industry for about 22 years. Mm-hmm. And I moved back to Dunedin in 2019 with the intention to help build the industry here. Awesome. Yeah. Pretty pivotal moment that 2019 year. Isn't it, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, it, you know things could have changed quite considerably. I think if it was prior, you know, mm. post COVID, yeah, you know, because there's been quite a shift with all that as well. But yes. it was um, inspired. The move was inspired because my son was about to hit school time, and I knew that Dunedin was an amazing place to grow up as a kid. No better place. So it was a bit of a no-brainer in that regards, but we had heard that the council were starting to show interest and initiative mm. towards bringing the film community here. Mm. So I was yeah. like, yeah. Exciting. Let's do it. So what was your career pathway to film and, and television? Uh, did you so, start? so actually... Um, through high school, I was really into the performance side of things and actually had this idea that I wanted to go on as an actress. Oh, wow. uh, but wow. but <laughs> I do love that, the performance side of things. But I found that, um, you know, I did a little bit of OE, jet setting, and then I got myself to Melbourne and uh, and decided to go into script writing, actually. So mm-hmm. I went through La Trobe University in Melbourne and... The first time I did put myself in front of camera, I was like, ugh, that's awful. Like, not only was it the fact that I was a very harsh critic on myself, mm. I actually found that I really missed the theatre, the the fact that you've got that live audience yeah. and the multiple takes. And to me, it lost my, my what I love about the creative yeah. performance aspect. In the moment essence. Really. Yeah, but yeah. what... But what I did love about it was actually the storytelling aspect mm. and actually that's kind of my essence. Now, like over the years, I've realised that that's where my main why is mm-hmm. to being drawn into the industry was mm. actually just the storytelling mm. element. Awesome. Mm. And you've worked for some pretty incredible companies over the 20-odd years. I have, yeah. yeah. Is there I, a particular story or special one that you'd like to share? Uh, I would say probably the two ones that pop up for me was Spartacus was quite a fun wow. one. Yeah. yeah. That was um, when the first season came, uh, I was the extras casting director on that one for the first two seasons and then I ended up assisting um, Chloe Smith, the lead producer. Wow. Um, I found that that when it first came about, there was nothing like it. Mm. And actually, Rome, BBC's Rome was like the only mm. s- sort of on that sort of level of intensity around nudity mm. and um, and gore mm. com- combined. Mm. And so it was, um, it felt like we were in unknown territory. Yeah. And just reading the scripts was like, that's <laughs> super graphic. And the first like script read through where all the HODs are in the room kind of going, oh, this is. Um, how is this going to translate? How are we going to put this on camera? And what can awesome. we and can't we do? And, yeah. um, but it became quite a tight family. And that whole experience and going through that process was, was pretty cool. Yeah. And as an extras casting um, director, most of the nudity or sexual performances came in my world as well. So I had to find the, the people to cast for that. Yeah. So that, and it's that's like a whole nother pub podcast. <laughs> There's some really interesting stories on that front. But sort of methods and tips and tricks that yeah, you have to. But because no one had seen it, right? Yeah. So it was season two, it was just like floodgates open because mm. people knew what mm. to expect. They'd seen mm. the first season and they're like, and they devoured it. Yeah, yeah. they were like, sweet, they, I could do that. Be, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other the other highlight for me would definitely be Zebra Zachariah. We um we shot that in um, Banks Peninsula in Port Levy. 
and there was only three cast and I was six and a half months pregnant. Oh, wow. And my wife and I, um, they hit the art department had built this be- beautiful little church there uh, as part of the storyline because they had to dismantle it in the story. And, and when they built it, we went in to have a little peeky and one of the art, uh, I think it was Jack Crayford actually, he was like, well, it's a shame that we have to, you know, we don't do something special in this place before we pull it apart. Mm. And Rachel and I just went, hmm, maybe we should get married. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we asked the producers and the director and they were like, hell yeah. Yes. And so the film, this is a very important film, but also became quite the yeah. uh, draw card of like this this um, very eventful what wedding. Beautiful story. Yeah, it was pretty special actually, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, those are my two highlights, I'd say. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. I'm so jealous it, of you. I'm interrupting. That's amazing. You <laughs> got to you've set never the, done that before. You've got, I know. <laughs> you've got to set your set. I know. And let someone else pay for your set <laughs> for your wedding. But also, so because Port Levy is like, uh, you know, there, there is no mobile reception. Mm. Um, we had... Uh, it's actually quite helpful having um, a wedding around a film crew because yeah. you've got lighting, you've got <laughs> he- heaps of people that can do photography, heaps of people that are like in stylists. Stylist. 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 I had my hair done, you know, I had costume help. We had just like our the art direction of our reception. This is so The caterers put on for yeah. us. The producers pay for part of the oh, catering. Wow. Like, you know, it was just like. That's really special. It was pretty special. Yeah. 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 And how long ago? That was now t- just over 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Celebrate that one. Yeah. You broke the camera rule. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm really jealous. <laughs> so, Bex, we know you weren't born in Dunedin. What's your... Shh. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> What's your... How did you end up in Dunedin? Like, I know you wanted to bring your children back. It's yes. a great place, but... What was the time before that alerted you to the amazingness that Dunedin offers? Well, so so my folks bought here and they, we moved here when I was four. Right. Okay. Um, from Christchurch. You're from Christchurch. Yeah. That's all right. That's fine. We love Christchurch <laughs> too. Very, very much a Dunedinite though. Yeah. Um, which is why I don't barely tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I and so I went right through schooling here. Yeah. Did North East Valley, DNI, Queens High School, yeah. uh, and loved all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, really fortunate with the friends I've got. Some of them I've known since I was four. You that are still connected when you came this, back. Uh, no, actually, they, they stayed with me. Like right. we kind of went all through our own, oh, you know. Right. And so actually, um, a f- some of the guys that I uh, went to school with, they uh, started on Lord of the Rings. So they. Oh. And a lot of them now are still some of the key people at Weta Workshop. Wow. And they were actually the ones originally who said, Bex, because I did my OE, they went on to Lord of the Rings and I went to study Melbourne and then they were like, Bex, come over, we'll get you a job. I was like, (laughs) okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going to get into the workplace. I could keep studying, but I just want to get, I'm like itching for it. Mm. And I moved to Wellington and then like within a week they were all out of a contract. So because they had had this, like, unique experience with five years of Mm. solid work for Mm. three films, which is just never done. And they didn't know that actually it can be quite fickle and you have to be Mm. constantly, you know, up to date with what's going on. And Mm. I think, I believe it was Narnia's script read-through, script rewrites, which is why it got delayed. And then they were like, we don't need you anymore. We'll call you back when we need you. And so yeah. that was actually a really great opportunity for me because that wasn't the right path anyway. And so I sort of found my the right route. The storytelling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So how is business in Dunedin? How is it going? People supporting you on your mahi and your journey to, to make Dunedin a great place for film? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think at the moment it's not it's not sustainable as yet, mm-hmm. but it's, there's huge potential. Mm-hmm. And I think there's definitely the, the wish and the enthusiasm from the council. There's definitely supporting infrastructure that's here. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I did notice when we first moved here, because Rachel and I had worked all around the country, we were getting crewed. 
but there was a lot of locals that weren't mm. and I was like why How is does that work yeah. yeah why is that and and essentially it's because a lot of the producers are either Auckland based or even potentially international and they don't have the time to mm. go and see who's here mm. and at that point the council had a list of people but they didn't know who was doing factual who was doing scripted so so I Consulted for them for the for about three months and just really dug deep to find all the all the different crew, try to kind of make it you know put it to that script to factual space, mm. and um, and that was actually hugely successful because the, the first project that came after that was Royal Treatment, yeah. and we had um, up to thirty percent, so we were going from like ten percent yeah. crewing local to 30 mm. and then last year we had uproar when they had you know a week shooting here love and that film yeah it's a beautiful oh. film yeah it was a, yeah it was a hard work one that one but it was really cool and i loved seeing how many locals that we had and mm. a large um for the riots we had like a large crowd day um so there's you know 250 plus yeah. extras and then there's like 12 stunties and then there's another 12 yeah. cast and then all the crew that goes supporting crew so out of that, that was fifty percent that were actually Dunedin wow, Knights. Yeah, great. not you know obviously all the background talent were all Dunedin, but yeah. So that's so there there is I think the there's more of an awareness not just here but also nationally that yeah. we do actually have some crew here and yeah. yeah so so it's just what about changes and in innovation that's happening around the film industry? Is that a concern? Is there things that we can embrace to make it easier and better and quicker or yeah I, I mean that? I'm a firm believer that change is just an opportunity for creative innovation and I also think that with Dunedin there's an innovative space to create something that's more bespoke that suits our city mm. rather than trying to shape something that mm. works in that Auckland or yeah. Wellington you know um, and I think that uh, a big part of that really has to come within the community as well because mm. the community here are always so supportive and they and actually it's an amazing place to shoot like you've always got enthusiasm no one's tired of having people come through no you know and everyone's like yeah <laughs> like, bring it on wants to do this and move it, you know and the great thing about that as well mm. is that that short you know the two degrees of separation where like mm. uh you need an aluminium welder at 2 a.m well oh, that'll be my cousin <laughs> like, okay cool that's yeah. great you know so that i i think i think it's actually been like Danine's a bit of a muse for me because I feel like since being here, I've been trying to work out a lot as well as to what what's my why? Like, why do I love mm. doing this? Mm. And actually, I think with filmmaking, what I've seen is that everyone can get a piece of the pie. Mm. Uh, you know, like I've, especially with extras casting, I've mm. seen, you know, three-month-old babies mm. get um, paid. I've seen 87-year-olds get paid. Yeah. You know, there's such a diversity in skill set. There's roles that you don't actually have to have any skill set or any experience mm. to be part of it. And and then just all the supporting businesses. Like, yeah. you have to have stationery. You have to have accommodation, cars, catering, you know, catering. Yeah. You know, it just, it's massive. Yeah. Yeah. And bottom line, it brings joy. It brings joy. Yeah. But the social impact side of it as yeah. well, right? It's like everyone, everyone has a story. Yeah. And and you it doesn't matter where you come from, yeah. you should know that you have the ability to tell a story. Mm. And that whether you choose podcasting, film, music videos, like mm. any any way of gaming, mm. there there's a space, there's a platform for it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, it's beautiful. Mm. No, I, I love this. It's it's incredible opportunity for Dunedin as well to embrace what you're talking about and what you're offering. So shout out to the Dunedin City Council for what they've done. Yeah. And let's see where we can take it next, I suppose. Yeah, eh? definitely. Yeah. yeah. So talking about Dunedin, because I love Dunedin, mm -hmm. you've loved Dunedin, mm -hmm. and uh, we like to hear some of the hidden gems that perhaps we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. You're visiting, oh, sorry, a friend has come to visit Dunedin. Mm -hmm. Where are you taking them to have lunch? Well, it depends on whether there's, actually, you know, you could do booze both sides, actually. Like, <laughs> Ardio is a bit of a fave. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's a cool spot. But yeah. I also love the Esplanade yeah. uh, because you got the opportunity to have a wee walk down the beach afterwards. It's, yeah. you know, location-wise, it's 
primo and, and yeah. the food's pretty good there. If you're a dog person, there's always plenty of dogs to look out for as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what about a secret spot to go and visit to get a quintessential Dunedin experience? Where are you going to? So for me, definitely, because I mean, I live in the West Harbour now, but actually, like I've always been drawn to Port Chalmers, Anwana, and then more recently, we love doing the Purukanui Inlet. Oh, nice. And if anyone's, like, those that are cockle fans, you know, we just go, come on then, roll your, you know, roll your um, pants up and get in and yeah. get ourselves some cockles. Nice. Yeah. Dunedin legend question, Bex. Mm. If you could share an Ocho hot chocolate or a Spates or a glass of wine with a Dunedin legend. So there's a few on that list. Oh, well, we've got plenty of time. uh, You know what? Do you know who I really like? I find her super fascinating. And I also go, when I'm your age, I really hope I am as styly as you and as um, social and as Barbara Brinsley. Oh, yeah. She's like... I mean, I just love, anytime I see her, she's just, she's always going somewhere. She's always socializing. She's done so much. Mm, Absolute icon. So much. Major icon. Mm. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a star Mm. crush on Barbara Brinsley. Yeah. The art world would be very different in Dunedin if we didn't have Barbara Brinsley. Big time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What a great choice. Yeah. (laughs) Do you want to share a second one? Well, you know, for me on a personal (laughs) level, um, I would say uh, definitely two teachers for me were Terry McTavish, who's also a legend in her own right, an icon of Dunedin, and um, David Elliott. because he's So he was my art teacher, and he was the – one of the things he said to me is the key things that I say all the time still and particularly to my kids, which is um, positive mistakes because yeah. I was a shocker for, like, ripping up. I was like, ah, this sucks, and I'd just be like, crap, yeah. and he'd just go, stop doing that. <laughs> he said, how do you know if it's gonna you're going to feel that way in next week? Yeah. You know, if you rip it up, it's gone, but if you go back to it, you might find that it's a positive mistake. Mm. Nice. Nice. It's a great lesson. It was a good one. Yeah. yeah. And both Queen's teachers, are they? They were. They were. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Hey, we've got the segment. We're mm. calling it the Sweet 16. Mm. Okay. Simple mm. answers, quick fire, uh, beach, bush, or a, um, a beauty spa day? Bush. Bush. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Going love, for a tramp. I, I love a forest. Well, I just love being in the forest. I might not tramp, to be honest, but I just yeah. like hang out with the. Nice. With the um, plant life. Fair enough. Yeah. Cindy Lauper or Madonna? Oh, totally Cindy. <laughs> I so Hello. knew the answer to that question. Yeah. Uh, country music or classical music? Ooh, classical. Classical? Totally. Yeah, I did ballet, so it was oh. just like, that's a no-brainer. Nice. Yeah. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Chocolate or ice cream? Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Morning person or a night owl? Well, I... I have always been a night owl, Mm -hmm. but actually I'm trying to become more of a morning Mm -hmm. because I feel like Mm -hmm. time time is my most precious commodity now. And I'm definitely way more, uh, if I get myself early in the morning, then Mm -hmm. I'm more rejuvenated and, you know, so... Yeah, yes. better but for it, our kids too. It isn't is it? better for the yeah, but, I, and it, but it goes against all, me everything else I've ever. I get it totally. For. Yeah, fiction or non-fiction? Oh, can you combine the two? Like oh. it's nothing like a really great um, scripted true story. You nice. know, like an yeah. Aaron Brockovich. Or, okay. You know, yeah. Oh yes, love it. Yeah, hugs or a head nod? Oh, totally hugs. I know. Yeah, <laughs> we definitely are can <laughs> Diamonds or pearls? Hmm, neither. Neither? Mm-hmm. Not a jewellery lady in no, that way? I am, but I love finding, like, you know, to me my treasures are, like, finding gemstones on the beach yeah. or, like, a really cool shell, and I'm just like, Let's, can we make this into something? Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what do we got? Summer or winter? Hmm. <sighs> both. Yeah, it's a hard yeah. one, isn't okay. it? I'm going to do both. Okay. But for varying reasons. I yeah. love winter. I love winter coats. I love winter for, <laughs> for you know, aesthetics of, like, what I want to wear. Yeah. But I love summer for just, like, lazing in a hammock and the sun streaming down mm. and, yeah. Nothing better. Mm. City life or countryside? Mm, again, both. See, this is, I'm an amnibus. <laughs> Are really, you a I'm Libra? Like, I'm, no, I'm a Sagittarian, but oh. I'm right on the cusp Cuff. of Scorpio Saggy, so you? I like to jump between the two all the time, oh. and I like to jump between all sorts of things. And I'm an introverted, extroverted, so I'm an amnibus anyway, so if I can do both. 
Brilliant. I'll try and do both. Yeah. I'm a pure breed Scorpio. Yeah, right. Nice. Yeah. My mum's a Scorpio Sag. Yeah. Uh, some sweet or savoury? <sighs> both again. <laughs> You know, sweet would be like chocolate mousse is one of my ultimate favourite oh, things. Yes. But yeah. savoury is probably what I'd lean to more for just you know, day to day. Sausage roll. Mm, potato chops or hot chips or, yeah. you know, anything potato based. Planner or spontaneous? <laughs> Both. <laughs> You know, it's all depending on, uh, you know, I love, I love spontaneity, but yeah. I also recognize the Planned value. Planned spontaneity. No, no. I mean, I think I, I probably plan more than I should these days and need more spontaneity. Yeah. But yeah, I'll instinctually I would have been a spontaneity girl for sure. Yeah. Netflix or go for a run. <laughs> Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. What have you watched recently? Oh, you know what I'm loving at the moment is Tokyo Vice. Oh, yeah, it's I not. It's very very cool. Cool. It's on TV and Z on demand. But ah. uh, con- local content loved the cleaner. Loved oh. after the party. Yeah, this after one. the party was so special. Yeah, wasn't it? It she's is, just amazing. She is just amazing. Oh. Yeah, I think the whole casting and performances and I just story it. it was all How, so at good. peace she was with herself. I yeah, think she's, I think she just was, but she was such a beautifully flawed character. Yeah, but that you totally oh, empathised with, and 100%. that's such an it's a real vulnerable mm. space mm. to storytell that you know mm. successfully. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Uh, and comedy or horror? Ooh, both. <laughs> and actually, I do love comedy and horror combined. <laughs> combined, yeah, because it's not you know like Shaun of the Dead. I mean, like. Hot fuzz. And you're like, never going to say that. Oh, so good. Yeah. Oh, funny. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. That gives us a little bit of insight into how balanced you are. <laughs> I'll just take on everything. I'll just give it a go, you know? Yeah. yeah. So what's cooking for the rest of this year for you, Bex? What's a 2024 challenge or target or aim that you've got bubbling away? So so, move, so moving more and more into the producing side of things, mm. I still contract as different other different roles but that's where my main um, mahi has been this year mm. um, we have there's a couple of projects um, series I have going at the moment in development um, I can't say anything about something but it's up watch this space Ooh, we um, like those little is, messages yeah um, but <laughs> which is really cool and but uh also um, just helping so you know the I, the bigger picture is you know the idea to have a production house um, and just trying to work at how, again, how does everyone get a piece of the pie, mm. starting it from uh, very much a regional perspective, mm. getting the right people involved, mm. and then just working out how the kaupapa meets um, the social impact of storytelling, mm. um, an educational element, um, and, and business revenue, you know. Mm. So I just want to make sure... It's almost a social enterprise. It's a totally approach. social enterprise, yeah. yeah. And and I want to make sure that, that, you know, you start the groundwork where you've got your people, profit, planet all yeah. already set up. Yeah. And yeah, watch so this that's, space. Watch then. this space, yeah. yeah. So that probably ties into the question if you had the power to make a change or to su- suggest something that could be done to the city which would make life so much easier for mm-hmm. you and, and others perhaps, yeah. what would that be? I think, well, definitely this production house mm-hmm. and having, you know, like, again, as I mentioned about the bespoke space for Dunedin, like not having it specifically feature or TV series, like, but opening it up to all different platforms and all different genres and mm-hmm. um, and small scale, big scale, you know, different budgets mm-hmm. um, and how that works within the collaborations that you form there, but yeah. also from an outside infrastructure, I mean, it's studio here. Yeah, mm. Having a studio in Dunedin would be massive for, like, sustainability, um, business revenue, mm. crew capacity, and just mm. growth in general. Yeah. And we could have a Desperate Housewives production. Absolutely. Let's Desperate Housewives of Dunedin. Des- Desperate Housewives of Dunedin, yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. Take a few wines to... Suss that out. Yeah, let's do that. I think we can make that happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, how do people find you if they're interested in talking to you about this idea of a studio being based here, or 
they're wanting to get into film themselves and they're wondering, you know, what pathways to take. How yeah, no, find you, Well, most definitely. I love um, anyone reaching out to me. It's definitely actually a bit of a personal joy is to help finding people mm. a way in mm. um, and connecting them with the right people because it is definitely all about networking. Um, I am on LinkedIn. Yep. So it's probably the fastest, easiest way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. No worries. Thanks really for having me. It. Yeah, it was fun. We're going to have to do it again, I think. We've probably got a few stories in there that we have to there's uncover. A, there's a few stories, yeah. <laughs> we'll do that when we get an update on the studio staffing. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. Watch Thanks again. Space. See you soon. Thanks, Bex.